they do not understand that being or existence may be of very different levels and categories. Take, for instance, the being of a mineral and of a plant. It is a different being. The being of a plant and of an animal is again a different being. The being of an animal and of a man is a different being. But the being of two people can differ from one another more than the being of a mineral and of an animal. This is exactly what people do not understand, and they do not understand that knowledge depends on being. Not only do they not understand this latter, but they definitely do not wish to understand it. And especially in Western culture it is considered that a man may possess great knowledge. For example, he may be an able scientist, make discoveries, advance science, and at the same time he may be, and has the right to be, a petty, egoistic, cavalier, mean, envious, vain, naive and absent-minded man. It seems to be considered here that a professor must always forget his umbrella everywhere. And yet it is his being, and people think that his knowledge does not depend on his being. People of Western culture put great value on the level of a man's knowledge, but they do not take value the level of a man's being, and are not ashamed of the low level of their own being. They do not even understand what it means, and they do not understand that a man's knowledge depends on the level of his being. If knowledge gets far ahead of being, it becomes theoretical and abstract and inapplicable to life, or actually harmful, because instead of serving life and helping people the better to struggle with the difficulties they meet, it begins to complicate man's life, brings new difficulties into it, new troubles and calamities which were not there before. The reason for this is that knowledge which is not in accordance with being cannot be large enough for or sufficiently suited to man's real needs. It will always be a knowledge of one thing together with ignorance of another thing, a knowledge of the detail without a knowledge of the whole, a knowledge of the form without a knowledge of the essence. Such preponderance of knowledge over being is observed in present day culture. The idea of the value and importance of the level of being is completely forgotten. And it is forgotten that the level of knowledge is determined by the level of being. Actually, at a given level of being, the possibilities of knowledge are limited and finite. Within the limits of a given being, the quality of knowledge cannot be changed, and the accumulation of information of one and the same nature within already known limits alone is possible. A change in the nature of knowledge is possible only with a change in the nature of being. Taken in itself, a man's being has many different sides. The most characteristic feature of a modern man is the absence of unity in him and, further, the absence in him of even traces of those properties which he most likes to ascribe to himself, that is, lucid consciousness, free will, a permanent ego or I and the ability to do. It may surprise you if I say that the chief feature of a modern man's being, which explains everything else that is lacking in him, is sleep. A modern man lives in sleep. In sleep he is born and in sleep he dies. About sleep, its significance and its role in life, we will speak later. But at present, just one think of one thing. What knowledge can a sleeping man have? And if you think about it, and at the same time remember that sleep is the chief feature of our being, it will at once become clear to you that if a man really wants knowledge, he must first of all think about how to wake, that is, about how to change his being. Exteriorly, man's being has many different sides, activity or passivity, truthfulness or a tendency to lie, sincerity or insincerity, courage, cowardice self-control, plugvacy, irritability, egoism, readiness for self-sacrifice, pride, vanity, conceit, industry, laziness, morality, depravity, all these and much more besides make up the being of man. But all this is entirely mechanical in man. If he lies it means that he cannot help lying, if he tells the truth it means that he cannot help telling the truth and so it is with everything. Everything happens, a man can do nothing either in himself or outside himself. But of course there are limits and bounds. 
Generally speaking, the being of a modern man is of very inferior quality. But it can be of such bad quality that no change is possible. This must always be remembered. People whose being can still be changed are very lucky. But there are people who are definitely diseased, broken machines with whom nothing can be done. And such people are in the majority. If you think of this, you will understand why only few can receive real knowledge. Their being prevents it.